back to another switch to Linux. Today we're going to talk about the implosion of a Linux distribution. Because apparently elementary OS is in trouble. And I want to talk a little bit about what possibly caused this and what probably did not cause this. I received an email today looking to look into elementary OS because it is undergoing a split up right now. And um, honestly, the email I got was probably not in the uh, most positive spirited. We'll leave it at that. But I want to look into it, uh, dig into some of the issues and explain what I think is going on and probably what is not going on. So, of course, if you follow my channel long enough, you know I am not a fan of elementary OS. I have never been a fan of elementary OS. I've been fairly consistent on my reasons, and of course, as the distribution has evolved, some of my reasons have also evolved. So let's first talk about why I don't like elementary OS. Number one, it follows the Mac-based UI and the entire Mac-based idea of they kind of want to do their own thing and not want you to have any option. I don't like that approach. I don't think it's Linux. I don't think it's open source. I just, I don't think it's a good approach. That being said, that is a personal choice, nothing technical with the operating system. The second factor is, and probably more, uh, more important, is it is extremely locked down. Meaning that if you want to do basic things like install a .deb package for your printer drivers because your printer manufacturer makes .deb drivers available and you just need a working printer, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> They're like, no, bro, we can't do that. That'd be bad. And so I don't like elementary for that particular reason in that um, they have locked down a lot of the primary means of installing software that's not directly tied to their software store. Point number three, their software store of curated apps is extraordinarily limited. It doesn't even contain things like LibreOffice, like YIMP, and other long, long-term track record, uh, very good track records, uh, very useful and widely used and adopted applications. Um, it doesn't have any of those. Now, in the later versions, you can install these, but you get a big security warning. Ooh, this is not curated by us. And so it might be stealing your data. It might be doing nefarious things about GIMP and LibreOffice. I'm surprised the open source community has not completely gone out and said, screw you elementary for putting warning notices on software packages with wide application because there may very well be shady applications out there that you could install that would be a lot better for those notices than things with long track records, just because it's not curated by your distribution. Those are some of the primary reasons I don't like elementary OS, and I've been very consistent. It has nothing to do with the people involved in the projects. And the reality is we shouldn't necessarily look at the people involved, although sometimes we do. So what happened here? Well, let's talk first about what seemed to happen with elementary OS, and then we're going to talk about what some people are saying seemed to happen, and some comments around that. So what happened is elementary OS did not happen to um, succeed as quickly as they thought it might. A lot of people jumped on, and they had a lot stronger user base in the uh, earlier editions because they had a lot of buzz. Uh, everything came out, it, it, when everyone's talking about it. It was all buzzy. It all looked, looked good, looked amazing. But then what happened is a lot of people realized how locked down it is, how difficult it was to use, and people just decided, eh, I'll abandon it and let's go for like Zorin or something else that's also Ubuntu-based that, you know, I can install dev packages and things like that. And so they lost a lot of user base. Now, in the middle of all of this, they were relying on their users in order to uh, help donate and fund through it by having this alternative funding model where people could develop and curate their applications directly for elementary OS. And in so doing, it would generate revenue for both the developer and for elementary OS. And so that's the type of stuff that we saw happening in the middle of it all. But the reality is, uh, in the middle of government forcing tyranny and lockdowns 
and in the middle of people losing jobs, a lot of people really weren't interested in paying for open source software that most other distributions would give to you for free. And so a lot of people ended up um, really either abandoning the project or not using it or just taking everything for free instead of funding it, and their revenue dropped more than they had initially projected. Now, when the company had started, it was started by Cassidy, and Cassidy then reorganized with Danielle, and these two ended up having the sole ownership. They had one third employee as well, and as they started with three employees, uh, eventually they had to start making cutbacks because of the uh, dropping revenue and whatnot, and so the first they cut back the benefits, and then they cut back the um, uh, the salaries, and eventually one person left, and then Cassidy ended up uh, looking for another job and donating all of his money back to the project to free up money for other things, living on a full-time project, and then Danielle just said, hey, I'll just take over everything, and you can leave. So leaving Danielle as being the sole owner of the company now. And so with that, we went from three employees down to one employee. And this right now is causing the little bit of a stir up around elementary OS. Now, that seems to be what happened. What a lot of people are saying is happening is a little bit of uh, politicalness in the area of transphobia. Because Danielle came out um, about six -ish or so months ago as transgender and gay. And so there's a lot of buzz going around saying, well, this all happened because uh, Danielle is pushing gay agendas and things into elementary OS. I have not seen any of that. Looked around, see if there's any truth behind that, and it would appear that is not the case. Okay, so what some people are suggesting is that uh, Danielle, being a transgender, is pushing transgender and other leftist ideology into elementary. I have not seen any evidence of that. That is not the reason I don't like elementary, and that is not the reason you shouldn't like it either. So I think some people have sent me the emails about this because being the whole Christian and stuff, uh, I'd have to be like, oh, we got to attack and assault and boycott elementary because there's a transgender person up there. No, you know what? Don't care. Let me explain to you why I don't care. From the Christian perspective, so my apologies if you don't like the Christian stuff. I'm going to explain why I don't care. Okay. On Danielle's Twitter feed, when Danielle came out, he specifically says at the bottom, he, she, whatever, I don't know, I didn't know which direction the person went, um, but Danielle wrote on the Twitter feed that I'm now my transformation to being a transgender, gay, atheist, commie is complete. That is the quote. Okay, so you're, I'm going to focus on atheist. You don't believe in God. Okay, that is enough for me to not care. Because in the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it tells us we do not judge those outside the church, we judge those in the church. So if Danielle was holding a Christian position somewhere as a gay transgender, we would have a different conversation on the basis of biblical authority and what the Bible teaches. But as far as participation in the wider society, guess what? I don't care. It doesn't matter. The direction that Danielle would like to take elementary OS is in no way, shape, or form indicative of what I am going to care about the, the operating system. What I care about is how well does it work, what is going on with it, is it usable, is it functional? And based upon the blog post from Danielle, it looks like version 7 of elementary OS might actually open itself up, which means we could actually see a case where we can install dev packages, where we can install other uncurated apps, and that would be a huge positive for elementary OS. So regardless of the person's political ideology or um, uh, who they like to go to bed with, it doesn't really matter. It shouldn't, and it shouldn't matter to you either, okay? All that really matters here is how does this thing function in the scope of what it's supposed to function as, and that being an operating system to do our work. I have not liked elementary for the specific directions it takes. If it fixes those directions, I will like elementary a little bit more. But the fact of the matter is, ah, oh, there's a nice bench here. This is like the fourth take I'm doing on this video. Uh, the elementary, uh, the point is, is that elementary OS 
um, it's not a good distribution on the merits of what it does itself. If those things get corrected, I'll give it more positive reviews. I don't care who the people are behind it necessarily. And uh, I think that's been fairly consistent on what I've done on the channel. I look at how well does the system work, not the ideologies or anything else. So I appreciate it, guys. Stop running around and saying, well, everyone left elementary because of the transphobia or because there's a trans person involved. It would appear that that has nothing to do with it. It had to do with the lack of money, the lack of revenue, and people had to go out and find other places to make an income. And that seems to be what happened with elementary OS. So that being said, uh, leave me your thoughts. Do you like elementary? Do you not like elementary? Let me know why or why not in the comments down below. With that, thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.